Hey everyone, it's Karen from Mayfly Life. Today I'm making kombucha. Now this is the first ferment uh, which is basically uh, the sweet tea and I'll be introducing the uh, the scoby which uh, feeds off of the sugars and the, the tea um, in, the, in the water to produce the bacteria needed to uh, to make kombucha. Um, so what I'm going to, what I've got here right now is four cups of uh, distilled water and I've got it ready to start boiling almost uh, and what I'll be doing is I'll be adding to these four cups six tea bags of uh, black tea. Uh, you can use organic which most people recommend using organic. I ran out of organic so I'm just using just a regular uh, black tea that I have and uh, then I'll be adding uh, the remainder of the water will be cool distilled water because you don't want to introduce your SCOBY to hot tea because that'll kill it because it's a living organism and uh, I don't think um, it would appreciate being dunked in uh, hot water. So uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, add uh, for uh, the remainder eight, the remaining eight cups of cool distilled water to uh, my kombucha jar, and be adding uh, the hot tea uh, to it afterwards, so that it's it's cooled. But I need to cool it completely to room temperature uh, because I don't like I say I don't want to want to kill my scoby. Okay, you can see that the, the water is uh, pretty much uh, boiling, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this, uh, turn this uh, element off and I'm going to add my six tea bags. And I, like I say, I'm going to let it steep for about 10 minutes, but while that's steeping, I'm going to pull it off a little bit and I'm going to add uh, the sugar uh, shortly in a couple of seconds here. Uh, okay, give that a little bit of a mixy mix a bit so it, but I'm going to add, a, I've got half a cup of uh, sugar here, but I'm adding three quarters of a cup of sugar, and this is creating the sweet tea. So I'm going to take my trusty wooden spoon and give that a stir. And generally, when I when I make the the sweet tea uh, for the next, because uh, I do a continuous brew, um, so as there's um, already finished kombucha, uh, which I had flavored uh, previously uh, from a previous batch, uh, it's sitting in the fridge now because it had uh, it had uh, done the second ferment for oh about three 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 days three or four days, and what I do is once I I add. Uh, I've used up a couple of bottles of kombucha already. Um, what I'll do is I'll start my, my next batch because this is going to sit, like you're going to have to make it sit for and let it brew and, and uh, ferment for, uh, you know, a, at least 10 days. So um, this batch that I did, the, the second ferment, um, was already... Uh, uh, down two bottles and uh, it'll last me for those 10 days because what I what continuous brewing is is that as you're uh, as you've got uh, second ferment bottles um, ready you've got the next batch of sweet tea on the go so you're continuously uh, using it uh, and, and remaking uh, first batch remaking the second batch and so forth this is the the beginnings of the first batch and that is by steeping the tea okay you can see uh, I've got my empty jar here it's nice and clean it uh, went through uh, the dishwasher at high temperature so it kills off any bacteria you want to make sure that it's nice and clean uh, you don't have to be antiseptic uh, or completely sterile. I mean, you just need to be ensure that it's clean. So I'm going to add the filtered water and uh, then mix in the uh, the brew brew tea. Okay, so you can see that I've got the uh, I've got the eight cups of the distilled filtered water. Uh, it's nice and cold because uh, I actually put it in the fridge because I didn't want it to be uh, too 
like I didn't want it room temperature uh, so that the cold water will actually uh, slowly uh, cool the, the tea off. So now what I'm doing is I'm adding uh, the, the brew tea. You never ever want to add the brew tea first to your jars because what's going to happen is you're going to end up cracking your jar. So I'm going to give it a mix and it it's actually nice and cool. Uh, it's a lot cooler than um, than what it would have been if I used uh, just the regular uh, room temperature water. So adding more cold water, I mean you're still doing the 12 uh, you're still doing 12 cups, so uh, you know, uh, but you're only brewing four of the 12 so that you don't have to wait as long. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go wash my hands and I'll be right back uh, in order to handle the SCOBY. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the SCOBY from, from this and it looks alien I'll tell you it really does uh, it's perfectly shaped to the uh, to the, the size of your jar um, you're gonna find that you want you want to get it nice and uh, cleaned off and so forth but uh, you want to leave you'll see you'll notice that this is a, a chain of yeast uh, you want to keep that on because that's what also uh, that this is what produces uh, and eats up the sugars so what I'm doing is I'm removing all the scobies that I uh, that I had in the jar you want to keep you want to keep everything so basically this little guy what's gonna happen is that you can see the difference like in in the size and the, and the thickness of some of these scobies they build on top of each other so as you add this to your uh, sweet tea, you're going to find that uh, it's going to, on top it, of it, it's going to grow another SCOBY. So every batch you, you brew, you'll have another SCOBY. And what you're going to want to do is that whatever you brewed the last time you brewed uh, uh, your last batch, you want to keep, like I said, about a cup to a cup and a half of water of, of the brew, of the original brew, and you're going to add it to your steep tea mix. So I'm adding that now with everything in it. Everything that was mixed in, all the yeast, all the lumps, clumps, you name it, you want to keep that. So what you're going to do is with me, I'm just going to add my main, uh, my main uh, SCOBY, uh, one on top of the other, and you want to use the whole thing. So you're just gonna dip it in and it doesn't matter if if it's a little tepid it's okay that the the water is tepid it either it will either sink or float it doesn't matter this one's sinking <laughs> this one's sinking but what's gonna happen is is that it's gonna develop it's gonna develop its own its own um, its own SCOBY uh, a new one on top and it's going to produce a SCOBY the same circumference as the highest part of the of the the T so um, and you want to brew it for about 10 days so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe the rim off so it doesn't get all wet and then I'm going to add a coffee filter Like it's not rocket science. It it really isn't. And then I'm going to use an elastic band to keep it tied down. This way it prevents any um, fruit flies from wiggling in underneath. And yes, you may not have them in your home right now, but it's amazing how they appear and where they appear from. So what you're going to do is you're going to leave this on to keep dust, fruit flies out. And then what you're going to do is you're going to let it sit for about... 10 days uh, and then what you're going to do is you're going to test it uh, what you can do is take a, a straw and dip it down uh, in between the jar and the newly formed SCOBY that will will form on top um, and uh, 
then you want to taste it for sweetness. You want it to be, you don't want it to be completely like sweet. Uh, you're going to find that sweet spot between sweet and tangy. And then um, if, it's, if it's still too sweet, let it sit for another day or so. Try it again. But you got to, uh, when you're trying it, make sure that, uh, you know, you wash your hands before you handle it, before you put anything in the, in the jar, uh, like a spoon. Don't use, uh, don't use metal spoons. Use a wooden spoon. Uh, metal spoons will, uh, will react to the, uh, to the, to the, the batch itself and uh, could damage the, uh, the SCOBY. So you want to be careful with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just sit here place it in a nice nice little corner of my kitchen and wait for like I say 10 days I'm going to do this. I'm just going to shove it in the corner and you want to handle it as little as possible and it'll sit for 10 days okay simple as that that's the first ferment